Okay, recording in progress, and I'm going to turn on the live stream. Make sure that comes on. Okay, great. Looks like we're live on LinkedIn. And we have a couple of participants starting to roll in. Thank great. you guys for joining. We'll get started here in just a couple of minutes. Okay, great. Looks like we're live on LinkedIn. And we have a couple of participants starting to roll in. Thank Great. you guys for joining. We'll get started here in just a couple of minutes. Looks like I might have repeat audio on my, can you guys hear, did you hear the, the playback again? We're live on LinkedIn. Yeah. Okay. And we have a couple of participants starting to roll in. Okay, there we go. Should be good now. <laughs> yeah, it's fine now, Julie, yeah. Okay, great. I was wondering how you were speaking without moving your lips. That was impressive. <laughs> LinkedIn had to test me in one way or another. Okay, we'll give them just another minute to get in. Thank you to those who are joining us. So Kevin, I don't know if you knew this, I was talking to Chris and he was telling me that he previously was a part of Sugar CRM and that was news to me. Uh -huh. There we go. Five years. Wow. Five good years. <laughs> what was your focus with Sugar at the time, Chris? Uh, it was a mix of new logo and existing customers, uh, typically in the Midwest and East Coast. and. Um, uh, Eastern Canada. Okay, great. No verticals, no verticals at the time. <laughs> Things have changed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, great. I think we are ready to get started. Right. So um, to kick us off, um, thank you everyone for joining our Brain Cell and Sugar CRM June session of turning your data into dollars. Um, before we get started with our two presenters, I just wanted to let you know that you are on mute for the webinar. However, your questions are welcome um, at any point. Feel free to drop them in the chat. If I can't get to them um, at the moment mid-presentation, we will um, speak to those at the end of the session where we have a Q&A. And for those registered, whether or not you were able to attend or you're seeing this from the recording, um, we will send that recording out to you following the webinar uh, within the next day or two. So um, to get us started today, I wanted to welcome Kevin McGurl and Chris Farnham. Um, Kevin McGurl joins us as previous president of SalesEye. Um, you might be familiar with our acquisition. Um, SalesEye is a sales intelligence software, which you will be hearing more about throughout the presentation. And Kevin is now our VP of Manufacturing and Distribution Sector. And with an equally impressive and lengthy tenure in software sales experience is Chris Farnham, our Senior Strategic Account Executive at BrainCell. So thank you guys so much. Um, you're going to get some really great insights from these two industry experts, to put it lightly. Uh, so Chris, thank you so much. Thanks, Julia. Uh, hey, everyone. Thanks for your time. Uh, glad you're here. Here's what we're hoping to talk through today. We'll have a couple of slides to sort of key up uh, a quick demonstration. Um, but as you can see here, it's really focusing on setting the stage for why and how uh, data from an ERP or financial uh, applications can help guide sellers in a way that today's market really dictates. Uh, we'll also have the opportunity for some Q&A uh, at the end of the conversation. So please submit any questions that you've got and we'll be sure to address those at the end of the conversation. Uh, let's start with a couple of questions. We would love some guidance from you guys. You know, We're gonna share a lot of detail with you today. Uh, we'd love a little bit of feedback from you at the beginning to kind of 
help help guide our conversation. So we'll we'll take just a moment. Um, there's one response per question. Two quick questions, pretty easy. Hoping you guys can give us a little insight there. Great, and the poll is live. Um, starting to get some some answers trickling in. Um, with how do you identify your customers' buying patterns, how they've changed. We're seeing some for one, we evaluate the data in our ERP. We're seeing some, it's a gut feeling. Um, on question number two, how much time per week is your sales team spending on research prior to meeting with a customer? We're seeing some for one, zero to three hours. We're seeing a couple for four to six hours. And then we're seeing some for, I have no idea. So okay, I'm sure that's the board, some a board here. Sorry, I was saying uh, kind of across the board here, across Chris, the board. Okay. especially for number yeah. one. Great, great, awesome. Thanks for that feedback, guys. We appreciate you contributing there. So, what have we got planned for you? Um, oops, sorry. So uh, I'll let Kevin drive most of the conversation here, but really, it's the the value that can be gained from a sales organization's guidance uh, from, again, previous uh, purchase history of an account. There's quite a bit of information that we're going to cover today. So thanks for, uh, thanks for sitting here and buckle up. Cute. So yeah, thanks for the introduction there, Julia and uh, Chris. And clearly those questions were a bit loaded because uh, we wanted to obviously get the feedback from the attendees here as to you know, how much time has been spent you know, looking at data, pulling data uh, in the sales world. And the answer is too much, you know, I think generally. And that for those that had no idea, uh, it could be more than you'd ever dream. And certainly the Aberdeen research is showing here that salespeople are spending a lot of time um, trying to be data analysts, which often isn't their skill set. You know, they're actually trying to understand what the customer's buying or not buying, uh, looking at you know, spreadsheets, ERP reports, um, you know, looking at BI tools, which aren't really designed for, sell for sellers. So typically what we're seeing in the challenges here are that salespeople are overwhelmed by that, and therefore often they just don't bother. They've got the tools, but don't use them. And then they often tend to wing it on the call and just talk about sports and the weather, uh, rather than actually you know, doing any preparation for the call with the customer. So, uh, so therefore, these are some of the symptoms we're seeing, some of the challenges. We're gonna just take you through how we could quickly fix and solve those issues uh, using some very easy to use technology in the demo. Uh, now, those issues are becoming even more amplified um, as the buyer changes. And we're definitely seeing that the buyer is now starting to um, you know, um, buy in a different way. You know, there's often more, compet more competition. They're looking around, you know, customers are often buying more uh, online than they used to. Um, you know, we're now seeing that you know often the markets we sell into, which is manufacturing distribution, typically I'm getting a lot of feedback that the markets are very tough right now, and it's an election year, and you know, things are uh, you know quite uh, challenging in many many market sectors. So uh, can you put the next sign up, Chris, and we'll talk about sort of the buyer a little bit more, and certainly the individual buyer uh, that you may be dealing with in the sales world. Um, since the pandemic in particular, is now acting more like a con you know, consumer buyer than they did uh, previously as a business buyer. And it's doing a lot more research themselves online. Uh, they're engaging less with salespeople and salespeople are becoming less welcome. So therefore, we're thinking of perceiving now that you need to add more value when you're actually on front of the customer. So this, this blue zone here is all you've got, uh, whereas in the past, you may have had more selling time. So we've got to make a big impact here. And we're also seeing in research that buyers are buying high value ticket items without engaging with a rep. You know, and there's uh, over three quarters of buyers will spend the $50,000. And there's actually uh, over you know, about 20% would spend half a million dollars, um, which is again, a big ticket um, you know, without talking to a rep. And in our personal lives, you know, people are buying from Carvana and they'll buy a car, which used to be a high value purchase that involved uh, talking to a lot of salespeople. People now do that with, with a you know, click of a mouse. So the business buyer is doing the same thing. So the salespeople have got to get smarter, have better in information when they're engaging in this selling zone we're identifying here. So, hey, um, Kevin, I, I'm guessing you probably notice a similar trend, but 
I know that my customers are harder to get a hold of. They are yeah. having conversations with other, other vendors. And so when I do get to connect with them, I have to be able to bring something valuable to that conversation instead of just how many more would you like? Correct. Yeah, I think it's about that, that value now. We've got to deliver value. If we're going to exist as, as a selling you know, species going forward, we have to evolve. Um, so we're going to be talking about how we can now help the salesperson to actually add that value and uh, using you know, AI and machine learning in a very positive way. It's not a threat to the salesperson, but as, a, as an assistant to help salespeople to be more effective and to really add that value um, and stand out from their competitors in very uh, competitive marketplaces. So, um, so yeah, so to be sales data um, can be broken up into two you know, uh, different parts of the equation here to get a full 360 view of the customer. So obviously, typically Sphere M, solutions like Sugar, uh, will be you know, really looking at customers, um, you know, relate the relationship with the customer, you know, our contacts, you know, previous conversations, activities with the customer. Whereas actually what we're going to be talking about today, mainly on this uh, webinar, is what we call revenue intelligence, which is understanding the transactional data um, from the ERP system and actually finding out what the customer is buying, not buying, should be buying, and actually making that very accessible uh, to, a, to a salesperson and actually pushing it to them rather than have to go finding it, which is what we talked about earlier. Okay, uh, next slide, please, Chris, thanks. So yeah, so I've mentioned driving off the ERP data and we've got links to over 180 different ERP systems. If anyone in the call here has got something that we haven't dealt with before, um, you know, we'll talk to you. Uh, you know, I'll be very optimistic that uh, you know, there's no ERP system we couldn't work with. Uh, so the plan is to bring that data into our technology. We crunch it and we find the issues and then we push that to the salesperson so they can actually make those, those smarter uh, added value sales calls. So um, next slide, please, Chris. Thank you. Yeah. So. Kevin, we'd love if you could take us through this a little bit. And while you're queuing that up, I just wanted to quickly share why I'm so excited about this solution. You know, as a uh, consultant, I work with my customers. And when they tell me that, hey, we'd really love to get our ERP data into our CRM so we can take some sort of action on it, right? I mean, pivoting from one uh, application to the next takes time, like you brought up in an earlier slide. I mean, what this solves for, it's essentially, instead of having to pick up a huge chunk of concrete, right, to get that ERP data into the CRM, I mean, it's just a small little rock. It's it's an amazing simplification of a very complex and costly process that typically has to take place. So this is just a, a complete game changer for uh, sales organizations that have historical data in their ERP that they want their sales team to leverage. Absolutely, yeah, and I think Chris, to your point, there is also uh, uh, in some of the industries that you know you and I work with, there's uh, often a, a more seasoned group of salespeople, um, you know, the veteran you know, seller who perhaps doesn't like technology, you know, doesn't like CRM, so you may see it as a as a big brother. Um, we've really got to make sure we're adding, we've got to add value to that salesperson's life, and not give them an additional chore. So I think we're going to see in the demo here some extreme ease of use um, and you know quick answers for the salesperson. Uh, so we're not there to you know, uh, give them additional work. We're trying to actually you know, give them that time back so they can spend more time in front of customers. I love so, it. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's dive in and uh, you know, just um, you know, the the uh, usual uh, you know, warning here that obviously we've got a lot of different companies on with different use case and challenges in their in their in their sales world. Um, we are going to be generalizing a little bit on this call. So if this looks of interest or you, know, you catch a bit of a uh, something you hear you think, okay, that, that's intriguing, then we would definitely recommend a deeper dive session. So we really are going to scratch the surface today only. So a bit of a health warning there that uh, if you don't see what you, you, know, you, you thought you were going to see, it may be that we need to do a, a more personal uh, demo for you. So I'm going to do a couple of quick uh, role plays. Um, you know, just want to verify, Julia and Chris, that my, my, my sugar screen is now showing. Yeah, so Looks good. See. Great, thank you. Um, and the role play, first of all, being a salesperson, um, making a sales call and preparing that call without you know, having to say spend hours looking at reports or pulling spreadsheets, so I can walk in and be very well prepared. Uh, and then I'll be a manager. I'm going to then be looking at my whole team, my whole business, and slicing and dicing and trying to find you know, where do I need to spend my management time because that's very valuable too. Um, and then if we've got enough time, we'll perhaps talk about how we can also work with 
in a marketing role to create more effective marketing campaigns and promos uh, as well. But um, so I've just jumped into um, you know a, a classic CRM dashboard here, which is you know, um, you know sugar homepage for a typical salesperson logging in. And these dashboards can be very personalized. This is just an example of how this might look. So in my dashboard, I've got some of my um, CRM components, like my next actions, my calls, the customers I need to contact, my quotes, some account health, some pipeline. But you'll notice at the top here, we're getting um, alerts. And these alerts have been pushed to me. I've not done any work here. So these are basically just switched, you know, logged in. And I've got some, uh, in this case, three types of alerts, and there are more. I've got some, some churn alerts, which are warning me that perhaps my customers are at risk. They're actually spending less with me. And I've got customers here who placed no orders recently or no orders for 180 days. Uh, I've got cross-sells. Now, everybody I work with in manufacturing and distribution has got some element of bacon and eggs in their business. You know, the customer buys the flooring, but they're not buying the adhesive. You know, they're buying um, tools, but aren't buying abrasives. So everybody has some element of cross-selling. And every sales leader I talk to tells me that I wish my sales guys would not just take what they're given, but actually look to sell the eggs or the upsell uh, products as well to maximize share of customer. And we know that often the, prop the more profitable lines are in the associated products, not the core core item. So again, we are alerting the salesperson some cross-sell opportunities and also gaps. The customer's buying from us, but there's a gap. You know, they're actually, um, yeah, they might be buying um, engine components, but they're not buying the filters within that category. So again, we're just highlighting for the salesperson where there may be some gaps in their customers. So the salesperson get, gets a wake-up call. Now, this could also be delivered directly into their inbox. You know, so I might get in the morning, hey, Kevin, here's a bunch of customers that haven't placed any orders for 60 days. Um, you know, go after it. So again, the, uh, the solution here is guiding me uh, to the best sales opportunities. So I'm not just doing a milk run now. I'm actually prioritizing my selling time. So I'm in the right place, right time, having great conversations. So this is the wake up call. Uh, but now let's you know, dive in. Let's go and you know, let's do a quick um, you know, customer review. So we now want to go and uh, analyze the customer in a, in a bit more forensic detail. So we can actually start to prepare this call, but keeping it really easy you know, for the salesperson. So I'm now in, um, you know, again, a record card for the customer. So this would typically would have my previous calls, my notes, any documents, any cases I'm working with, uh, my contacts. This would be my CRM data. But what we're now doing is we're, we're in, embedding the ERP um, insights directly into the eyeballs of the salesperson here. Uh, so I can see here, you know, some example dashboards. So how we're performing in the customer, you know, how profitable are we, what's the spend, you know, the, the product mix. So again, some of the quick high level views here, uh, how we're trending, are we up, are we down? You know, so you can see the customer was actually down heavily on last year, even though they're still buying from me. Um, this is a very popular view with many of my customers, which is benchmarking the customer against their peer group. So in this case, I'm selling food, but so if this was a restaurant, um, what is this customer buying compared to other similar restaurants? And what is my penetration? So for example, on, you know, on non-food product here, the average is nearly 13% of the spend this customer's on nine or less than nine. So I'm underpenetrated here, which probably means my competitor is selling the product. Yeah. So again, it's indicative of the health of the customer, but it's again, compared this, this actually line here, the benchmark, the typical spend, and this is this customer and their spend. Um, we may have a target for the customer, a budget for the customer, but where the, uh, the real impact is and the value is, is now driving a actionable alert to the salesperson in plain English. So I don't have to worry about is the salesperson, you know, tech savvy. Uh, it could be a, a brand new salesperson who's joined my firm today, and this is their first call, and they don't know much about you know the product range. And we, but we're, we're delivering this in plain English. We're now giving the salesperson the chance for success. They can add that value. So I could walk in the door, say, "Did you see the Celtics game last night? How's Mary and the kids? And where are you buying your cheese from?" Yeah, you know, I can see that cheese you know, spend is down. So I'm having a, an actionable conversation that's data driven, and I didn't do any work. You know, the the solution did it for me, gave me those answers. So um, hopefully that makes sense as a concept. We've seen this really drive um, you know sales performance dramatically. You know, where salespeople are suddenly performing you know, 20% plus above where you were previously, 
because they've now got um, a powerful conversation to have with the customer. And it was that simple. It's one click you know, to get that answer. So, uh, Chris, any thoughts on that before I sort of dive in a bit deeper now? No, just want to throw out a little um, cookie crumb uh, to the, the listeners that we will talk through a couple success stories after the demo. So some specific uh, deliverables and re results that customers have seen from deploying uh, a very easy to use guidance solution like this. Great. So thanks, Chris. Yeah, and you're right. We're going to uh, give some real numbers and some real insights as to how quickly also we can get uh, value. Um, so typically, I might be curious now, this might be enough for me, actually. I could go and make a pretty dangerous sales call, even at this level. But let's imagine now I am curious. I want to go a little bit deeper. I've got a couple of options. Uh, one is to, you, I'm hovering over this go button here, and I want to sort of dive into the ERP data a little bit deeper. And I want to now start to, you know, really analyze what is going on in this customer. So we saw that they were down overall. Um, and we're seeing here that, yeah, we've got some definite uh, drifting in, in, the, in the customer. But which categories are we down on? So we're now seeing, you know, uh, some of our, you know, ambient, frozen, these categories are down, even though the customer is still buying. There's still you know, uh, some level of uh, growth in the customer. But clearly, it looks like my competitors are starting to take some of these categories away from me. Uh, one of my customers calls this product erosion, you know, where we haven't lost the product. It's been eroded by a competitor. Um, now, I might want to dig even deeper into this. You know, so I might say, okay, well, that's I'm concerned about the chilled here or I'm concerned about the frozen. Uh, let's dip into the frozen uh, category in a bit more depth. So this will go, go through the various layers of, of hierarchy you have in your data. And again, in this case, we're identifying that you know, we've lost a lot of the meat and poultry, the bakery, data products. So we're now seeing exactly where that leakage is occurring, that erosion. And I want to go even deeper. Uh, I can get right down in this demo. Uh, it could be to brand. In this case, I'm going to go right down to the, the SKU or the item level and see, you know, in this case, we've lost the cheese and tomato swirls. Uh, we lost the Belgian buns. You know, so these are now gaps in the customer, but we're seeing where this erosion's happening. So, so far, I've made two or three clicks, and I'm now pretty well informed. So I can now go into the customer, you know, have that um, conversation, ask some tough questions about you know, where you're buying tomato swirls from, uh, and that's probably gone to a competitor, and I may need to, you know, uh, win that back, you know, to, again, build my share of customer. So again, I'm not going to go into every scenario here because there's, there's a lot of great uh, different options and value here. But uh, the salesperson, again, could also, in this case, we were, we were monitoring dollar value, could also be equally be monitoring you know, a number of units sold, the average price of items, profitability of items, all of which are indicators of health of the customer. The customer's buying um, you know, 20 items a week and that drops, even though the dollar value might grow because they buy a high value item, you're still losing the customer to a level. Uh, so, so lots of great ways of us indicating and helping the salesperson be in the right place at uh, the right time. Now, for larger accounts, one of the use cases that many of my customers uh, share with us is that they have to create a business review. They've got to go and see the customer, you can sit down, share uh, their buying data with them you know, in a consultative uh, fashion. Now, that is usually a chore for a salesperson. And uh, we've got a tool here called the Snapshot, and again, I, you know, because we're on a, on a short webinar here, I won't build one totally um, live here, but you can actually pre-production, um, just tick a couple of boxes, you know, pick a color scheme, press generate, uh, or just generate and have a standard template produced, which is basically just one click. And that means a even your lowest tech uh, salesperson could produce a on-brand you know, professional presentation in a, to share with the customer in a business review so I've got customers that have bought sales eye just to solve this one problem. Yeah, because rather than a salesperson spend two to three hours with pivot tables and PowerPoint, have some data slave do it for them, uh, they're now self-sufficient to compute their own business reviews. This is just an example of uh, you know, how this might look. And because it's PowerPoint now, I can add additional value uh, bells and whistles to actually make it into a sales presentation, which might take me two minutes. So I'm now focused on the message on my call, that value piece, not the mechanics of building the presentation. So we're just trying to take away all of that, all those, all that noise, all that friction that slows salespeople down. Okay, so that's um, some typical uh, use cases of you know of me being the uh, uh, being a salesperson. Um, I'm now going to perhaps just quickly, I'm just watching the time here, uh, move to perhaps the manager role. Again, quickly show how can we help a manager understand what's going on in the whole business. But before we move off the sales role, Chris, any um, 
any sort of final thoughts from you before we yeah um the the super powerful uh capability of pulling together that um you know that that summary that report right i mean a, a like anyone in an organization a person's time is the most valuable and expensive ip that that business has and so if you can free up you know a half of a day when i'm pulling together a a review for a customer i mean that's that's powerful uh, will hit the bottom line because then I can focus my time on selling as opposed to administrative tasks like pulling together a, a presentation for a large customer. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, you know, it's admin, isn't it? And salespeople don't, generally don't like admin and sometimes just not good at it. You know, it's not what they're, not their skill set. So uh, um, actually, before I jump off the sales role, I just want to mention that, yeah, if you've got you know, one, one tool that salespeople always engage with and sometimes getting CRM you know, buy-in you know, is often a challenge. Is everyone checks their email every morning. So again, one really easy hack we've got here for which our customers really love is the ability to, you know, to push these alerts now directly into the salesperson's you know, inbox. So every morning or every you know, Monday at eight o'clock, I get a list of, in this case, customers who just stop stop buying a key category, and it's given me a list of fifty customers to follow up. And I can click on those customers and go straight into that detail that we saw earlier. So really making it you know, very salesproof, uh, so there's no excuses or barriers. For us actually understanding what's going on in our customers. The salesperson can't say, well, I didn't know I was losing the customer. We get that early warning radar, which again really helps the salesperson. And now, Kevin, I know that no sell no seller would ever do this, but if you had a seller that maybe wasn't, you know, chasing those notifications themselves, could that also go go to a sales manager? Uh, yeah, I'll like sell, yeah, it's a really good point. Yeah, the sales manager will also also be aware. And sometimes there's escalation on some of those alerts, Chris, where you you know alert the salesperson, the customer drops, you know, 10%, you know, warn. Uh, the sales sure. manager is 20, more than, the, yeah, more than the VP of sales if it's 30%. Uh, so there's an there's a escalation of visibility. But absolutely, we're going we're gonna to know if the salesperson is actioning and following up on those, um, those scenarios. Um, so that's you know, a bit about the sales role. But obviously, sales managers, sales leaders need data as well. And uh, so we're also going to help you know, drive uh, information that's going to help you know, anybody who needs to understand what's going on in their team, in their market, in their customer base. Uh, so again, again, I'll, I'll make this very brief. I mean, again, I'd recommend a deeper dive demo uh, to talk about particular scenarios that might be appealing to anybody on the call. But say I was a sales manager and just logged in and I want to check out, well, okay, my, my various teams performing. Let's, let's do a quick uh, you know, uh, review of my, my sales organization. So it looks like I'm doing pretty well this year. I'm up, you know, six and, six and a half million. All my teams are up, which is great. Um, I want to go look at my central team, which have grown pretty heavily there. And see, is there any uh, erosion or leakage there I should be concerned with? Now I could drop, drop to my customers, to my reps, to my markets. And perhaps I want to go and see my customers. And I can see, you know, uh, okay, these are my reps, sorry. Um, so I can see that uh, Antonio and, and uh, Newsom uh, are having a bad year. You know, what's happening here? So I want to look at Antonio's sales. We're up, you know, 2.4, 3 million in this branch. Why is Antonio having a bad year? Again, I can just tap on Antonio. I can now... You know, dive into uh, the product categories and see okay, which product categories does she need coaching on? So perhaps you need some help you know, with some of these product categories. Uh, so we perhaps need to do a ride along on you know, ice cream and desserts. Uh, now, which customers would we go and ride along with? Which of her customers has Antonia lost the dessert business on? And these are the customers that she's lost or had serious erosion. So again, I can prioritize my time there. And I want to see, okay, for that customer, uh, I want to see, okay, which products inside that category, you know, did Antonio lose? So it's the vanilla and it's the sponge cake and the rum and raisin. Uh, so I'm now down at a very forensic level uh, without me having to go off to an IT guy, use complex BI tools, spreadsheets. And I've got that breadcrumb trail there, which means I can, I can navigate easily north, south, east or west. And I can look at a different, you know, um, customer, a different product category, different sales rep, a different region. So I can navigate back and I don't lose my, my drill trail. I can go back to where I was. So again, very easy to navigate. Lightning quick, it's going to be Google search speeds, often with millions and millions of transaction lines. Now, if I've got my favorite views, I can save them, I can export them, put them on my homepage. So again, very helpful for sales managers who want to actually get the information they need to drive the business in a tough market have it at their fingertips again without them you know, having to be a, a rocket scientist when it comes to using data. 
So that's just some of the insights there. Again, lots of different options. And again, I don't have time to cover them all. Um, but where we saw the, you know, those uh, campaigns popping up earlier, these can also be used to alert managers. Obviously, we mentioned that earlier, Chris, uh, but also to drive you know, promotions. In this case, say I wanted to you know, promote uh, you know, uh, yogurts, and I'm using the English spelling there uh, of, of yogurts, uh, or you know, any other product category in this demo here. And this could apply to any industry where you're looking at uh, those uh, repeat sell you know, consumable uh, sales items that customers are buying continually, and not buying from you, they're buying from a competitor. Um, you know, customers here are not you know, spending with us, but not more whipping cream or whatever the alert is. Um, I've got an audience now. Now, I've got an audience of 790 customers that break that rule. So they're buying from me, but they're 10% down on that particular category. Uh, I can now do a very focused sniper rifle campaign targeting that group of customers and you know, potentially push that into a marketing play. So we can actually do a marketing automation um, campaign now with a particular uh, set of uh, you know, sales you know, marketing rules that would apply to that audience. Uh, so it's very personalized, it's, it's relevant, it's timely. And one of the examples that we're going to share in a second on the case studies is a customer that's actually you know, grown sales phenomenally just by doing this classic, these classic scenarios and pushing uh, campaigns out there rather than shotgunning everybody. They're now being very specific and very, very focused in their marketing, which is essential in a tough market. Plus, if a salesperson wanders into any of those customers, they're going to know that your got sales are down. Yeah, because that is our target group that breaks that particular rule. Uh, again, if we get into a deeper dive demo, we'll show you how to create these, you know, how to uh, you know, you know, uh, create these yourself based on anything you know about the DNA of your business. And we also have AI machine learning components, you know, making recommendations for you and suggestions, uh, finding things you might have missed, finding new target markets that um, are a sweet spot that you, know, you may have just missed those or not been aware of those, that particular association between different products and, and making that available to you now to mobilize uh, to grow sales. So, um, so that was a quick tour through the demo there. Um, any thoughts again, Chris? Any things we want to dive in a bit more, a bit more depth there? Do you think? Yeah, you know, I think that's good for for this uh, this conversation, Kevin. Just you know, it's amazing that there is a um, easy to deploy application that can access the ERP data without sort of starting from scratch or again, having to lift that giant concrete boulder, which is what a typical ERP to CRM integration involves. If anyone here has ever tried it, it's just a lot of work. That work means time, that time means money. This is just a streamlined approach to get that access to the ERP information and then present it in a manner where us salespeople who are laser focused on taking the path of least resistance to to driving more value for our customers, translation, sell them more. Um, this is this is a, a game changing tool. Yeah, and if you, if you actually just raise a really um, vital point there in terms of differentiation here, Chris, is um, most technology platform projects are a bit of a drama. You know, they actually take uh, a lot of heavy lifting. You're going to deploy, you know, a CRM lift and shift across your whole business. You know, that, that's a, that's a big project. It involves a lot of uh, consulting, a lot of integrations, a lot of work. Whereas actually sales eye is everything I've shown you today is actually out of the box. It's an application, it's not a toolkit. And you know, basically we do plumbing, as we would call it, to the ERP data, uh, load three years of history, refresh that daily, uh, test that, verify, make sure everything's accurate. So typically our customers are live and operational, selling more, you know, in 30 to 45 days from saying let's go. Now, right now, um, you know, a lot of people are finding that you know, the first half of this year wasn't great for them, you know, and, and numbers were a bit soft and they're, they're not where people thought they were going to be. Uh, so right now we're getting a lot of uh, customers wanting to spin up projects right now to actually address that in the second half of the year. So if anybody on this call wants to grow sales in 2024, it's not too late. You know, we can actually deploy this tool, you know, in the next 30, 45 days uh, and give your sales teams a boost at the back end of the year and certainly you'd be cruising into 2025 uh, with a, a very dangerous sales team that are actually uh, making very effective sales calls. So I think a lot of people think, oh, yeah, it looks great, but it's going to be too, uh, I haven't got the bandwidth. It's going to be too big a project. Uh, this is a very light project. It will involve very little time from your IT folks to set it up. Um, so and it, so it's, it's a quick win. 
you know, in a, in a very tough marketplace. And for reference, uh, traditional ERP integration easily takes 2x that time frame, Kevin, oh, that yeah. you had spoken about easily. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And we want to make sure there isn't you know, visual drama. Uh, that it's a light project. We just, you know, uh, even if you're working in some, again, heavy lifting, like you're doing a big e com um, you know, system or a warehouse management system, you know, let's just take a little bit of um, IT time, verify the RP links, uh, and then the salespeople are off the races. You know, they've got a tool that's going to deliver very, very quick value. So, again, very disruptive, you know, compared to, say, traditional, you know, tech projects. Um, so, that's been certainly in the current climate. Yeah, very, very appealing. So I think, Chris, we're going to sort of dive into some... Yeah, of let's take a look. Because, um, yeah, it's all great me telling you this, this, you know, this is great, but, you know, I'd, I'd rather let some of our customers and their results, you know, uh, speak for us as well. And this is actually the a customer I mentioned earlier that was using um, sales eye technology for driving those campaigns. And this customer is actually in the office supply industry, uh, and they're actually, um, you know, selling a classic range of office supplies. So they're looking for people who... If you buy, you know, they're buying paper, don't buy toner. You know, who buys break room, doesn't buy coffee. Uh, who buys cleaning materials, but doesn't buy, you know, um, dishwasher soap or, you know, all sorts of massive amount of cross sales, link sales in their world. Uh, again, if they're not selling it, somebody else is. Uh, so they started to use this tool now to actually be very specific and run promos with their vendors. So they do vendor deals every month. And then they'd use sales eye to push these out and getting very high results. I mean, actually, I had a review with, the, with them last week. This is actually in the first 60 days. Uh, they're now up to over 9 million now in, in incremental sales through just using that basic technique that we talked about earlier. Uh, big win for them was actually was reactivating dormant accounts. And you can see here that they've actually managed to you know, spin back a lot of customers, win them back, uh, again, by offering value. And also for those that do you know any sort of... Uh, email marketing, getting very high hit rates compared to the average, you know, just by making it timely, relevant, accurate. Uh, so they're not spamming customers. You know, they, they're, they're speaking to them in a very personal way and getting high results. So that's that's one example. Um, then we've got a couple of um, other case studies here. This is actually a um, customer down in Charlotte. Uh, Beth Freeman runs a great operation down there, um, again, in office supplies and business, uh, business and janitorial. Uh, about 100 sales reps, you know, and uh, again, getting great, you know, great results. And they've used Sugar and Sales Eye together. Now, this is actually a, a fairly new customer for us. And we did a webinar actually last week to a bunch of Sugar customers, and the deal was actually the uh, the guest speaker. Um, now, he's, you know, got, you know, had all sorts of data tools, all sorts of you know, other projects, um, been involved in a lot of acquisitions uh, as a business. They're actually in the electrical um, supply uh, business. Uh, very sizable you know, sales operation. And uh, but the acquisitions have made you know the need to cross sell very, very important in their world because they've got now new product ranges that their, their sellers aren't aware of, but they want to be able to push those through uh, sales eye. So they've used this to really grow a, a whole culture of cross selling in their business. Um, but again, speaking to that time to market, one of the things the deal was able to share with other sugar customers last week was this only took him a month to implement. And he's working on some very heavy uh, integration projects right now. But this was, again, a very quick, easy win and address the needs of his sales organization. You know, he's the, uh, he's the, you know, the sales enablement lead. And the sales guys were just saying, I just need more information. I need to know what's going on with my customers. The market's really tough. And this was an immediate quick win uh, for the sales organization. So those are just, you know, some examples of typical, um, you know, case studies we've got. Yeah, you know, for pretty much every industry, we have stories to tell about how we've helped people grow sales in these these tough markets. Um, and uh, there's no presentation that exists on the planet. I think in the tech world, it doesn't involve a Gartner slide. So here's our Gartner slide. Um, so I think uh, Gartner are now saying, you know, obviously that you know there is a future for sales, um, despite some of the naysayers that say, oh, sales is dead and it's going to be replaced. Um, I think we're now saying that we need to put our sellers on steroids. You know, we can't just have them out there, you know, doing those milk run calls. We've got to give them the weapons, the tools to be successful. And I think, you know, this 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 level of insight and driven by machine learning and AI really does uh, help a salesperson. Analogy we use often is, you know, uh, the, the, the caddy. And those who watch the uh, US Open at the weekend, yeah, every every pro golfer has a caddy. They're not carrying their own bag. They're not measuring their own yardage. 
And we're now saying be a pro salespeople, give them a caddy. You know, so it'll tell them if customers stop buying, you know, position this product with the customer. Uh, sales volume's gone down, profitability's falling. We'll give the salesperson information. It means they can actually make the shot. Now the caddy isn't making the shot, the salesperson still is. We've just been an assistant, but we, we, we're teeing up our salesperson to be successful, but excuse the pun. Um, okay, so that's all I think we had to sort of cover there, Chris, and uh, I think we're going to throw it open now to some, some Q&A. Yeah, yeah, Julia, did you capture any uh, any good questions for us? Yes, I have um, to start. Is there a possibility to, ability to compare pipeline to these drill downs, or is it only ERP data? Now, it can actually be... Um, uh, we do actually bring often bring in a lot of CRM data, and the CRM data could be things like type of customer, uh, customer attitudes, you know, uh, could be size of customer, you know, how many are selling, um, you know, uh, you know uh, industrial supplies, you know, how many machines do they have, self supplies, how many office workers do they have. So maybe some CRM data that I could leverage, um, and certainly we're bringing in things like budgets from CRM. So yeah, so we can actually meld the hard and soft data together. In, in the queries and drill downs that I was showing you earlier. So we could look about, you know, on all the law firms in this area with more than, you know, um, you know, 100 office workers that don't buy toner cartridges from me. So I'm able to use the CRM and the ERP data blended uh, to create those, uh, those questions. Great. Um, do I need to be on sugar to utilize sales eye for my CRM? Okay. Um, Controversial question, Julia, given this is a sugar sponsor webinar, but uh, the answer is um, uh, yeah, no. Uh, there's some, there's, well, yeah, we recommend that uh, a lot of the integrations and the, the insights we're driving into sugar you know, will be differentiated. But if somebody wants to deploy sales eye standalone, they can do that. Uh, we also do work with other CRM tools. Um, yeah, I've got a lot of customers using Salesforce and, and other CRM tools. But there are some very strong standalone apps. If you, if you want to put this, get this running without uh, having to you know, look at or, or consider your CRM requirements, you, know, you could make a quick start just with SalesEye. Um, you know, and, and that's a product that you know, Chris can, can sell you as a standalone if necessary. But there are some, rec you know, some recommended plus-ups that would only come from deploying Sugar. But so I think you can still get great value um, you know, give, uh, you know, taking it as a standalone product or integrating with another other CRM tool if necessary. Sure. Okay, so you mentioned Kevin, thirty to forty-five days average for setup time. What am I looking at for pricing? Okay, well, that's again a bit of a pers personalized question. I mean, we we tend to uh, you know, we'll tailor a deal, and Chris will work with you on um, you know number of users, and, you, know, um, you know what type of users you need to deploy. But it's sold in a very similar way to you know. Uh, you know, uh, sugar in terms of it's a monthly per user subscription. So it's pretty easy to work out you know, the value. If you're looking at you know, needing to find three or four dollars a selling day per salesperson uh, to make this self funding. And obviously, my customers would would acknowledge that that's very easy to find. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a monthly subscription. But again, we just need to know how many users, type of user. Um, yeah, and then we can very quickly give you a, a, a proposal. I'm sorry to be evasive on that because uh, I don't want to obviously. Uh, you know, give somebody a number and they, they start to big Chris up and go, well, Kevin said it was that. Um, <laughs> because there are some, it, there are some you know, questions we need to ask to give you a, a personal quotation, um, yeah, which, which we can spend very quick. And also, uh, I think Chris might mention this later, there are some um, incentives running right now as well, which uh, would come into play, which again, are very personalized to, again, your timing yep. as well, how quickly you might be able to deploy this. Yeah, but a per user subscription model annual commitment is the rough structure. Um, I don't expect it would take most uh, organizations with a standard average sale price uh, too long to to pay for a solution like this. It's yeah. it's not a, a year's worth of sales. It's a, a much much more mi microscopic number. Yeah, we expect it to drive value the first day you use it. You know, so, so again, I think that's a, often when you deploy like you know, uh, big tickets, you know, um, IT platform, the ROI could be months, years, decades away. Uh, this actually is, okay, if I get value, my first sales call, I'm getting value. Um, you know, if, yeah, but depending on what I'm selling, if I'm selling you know, auto parts, the first time I go out and meet a customer who doesn't buy wiper blades, I sell the wiper blades, I've paid for my subscription for, you know, the, the next quarter very easily. 
So we often say to people, think of that, you know, think of that one thing you can sell a customer. You know, you sell one of those every day, it, you paid for it. So, so we, and we'll work with you on an ROI model, you know, based on just some questions we need to ask you. Excellent. Okay, I believe that wraps our Q and A. Um, so, Chris, if you want to tell us about next steps, definitely. Well, I'll just like to add that. Hey, I'm uh, I'm excited that I learned a couple things. I can I can find out uh, if my customers aren't buying cheese from me anymore, right? And <laughs> um, I play better golf when I've got a caddy telling me, you know, where the lie is, where the wind's blowing, right? So, sales eye is your caddy for selling. It's great. I love it. Very cool. Love it. Um. Kevin mentioned, yeah, uh, Brain Cell, uh, by the way, is a sugar integration partner. We're a, a you know massive uh, partner of uh, of sugars, and we can assist you in your research of this topic. We're offering incentives right now. Uh, we also have an offer for an ROI uh, analysis to understand what type of value could you see from a uh, from a sales eye type of deployment. Uh, you can see the the RFI code right there. Feel free to scan that. Uh, you can also contact us at growth at braincell.com. Uh, we'd be happy to answer any of the questions, both technical or business. Uh, other than that, um, Julia, Kevin, any other thing, anything else you've got for the, the listeners today? No, no, I think uh, certainly because I just say, yeah, if, um, yeah, to your point, yeah, that's a quick RI analysis and a custom demo. Um, again, I think that's going to be a very valuable. Uh, to help people if they want to just you know, get to the next level, make an informed decision, um, and certainly you know, if you if you want to make a difference this year, you know, talk to us quickly. You know because we can, as I mentioned earlier, you know we can boost your second half of the year. Give you that hockey stick. You know it's been a flat, flat or declining year for you. So yeah, so uh, you have to encourage anyone on the call who's curious, and intrigued by this, you know, to uh, do it now before you get back to your day job and. You know, forget about uh, you know what you've seen today, um, and Julia will follow up with more detail and uh, a recording of this. If you need to share with any colleagues, um, but as I think you probably already gathered, we did just scratch the surface of the potential here. Uh, there's a lot of value that we didn't have time to cover, and uh, we look forward to hopefully meeting everybody on the call over the next you know uh, two or three weeks on some more personal one-on-one -on -one sessions. Yeah. Same, same here. Look forward to talking to any of the folks uh, that joined today or watching this in a recording. Happy to share the details that uh, Kevin and I covered on a high level today in more detail. Fantastic. Excellent. Okay, Thank well, we've luckily uh, finished a bit earlier, Julie, which I think was our plan was to try and give everybody 15 minutes back. Uh, yes. We've all been on that webinar's overrun, so we respect everybody's time uh, <laughs> also. So, uh, so hopefully that 15 minutes gives you time to get a copy before your next meeting on the hour. So, but thank you for joining and I hope that was uh, that was valuable. Excellent. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Kevin. And thank you all for attending. Take care. Thanks, attendees. Thank Cheers. Bye, Bye now. Bye-bye.